Skellig Michael. It's at the top of the pyramid. It is outstanding in universal and global terms. Both of its archaeological significance, its attraction in terms of heritage tourism and is spectacularly beautiful. It's quite a special place. I think it's that concept of pilgrimage. You have a boat journey, no matter how wild or calm the sea is. You're very aware of your journeying to a place. Well, it's a level of endurance all pilgrimages are. There is a little bit of hardship involved. Dotted throughout the island are, are the, the faint ghost-like traces of old steps leading up the peak, up towards the monastery. Oh my God, look at that. That's the high peak, salt peak up there. And there's two ways up. There's a way up that was built kind of hand and footholds before it became a little pilgrimage site. Right. And then the bit that's now dangerous enough that you have to wear a harness was built for pilgrims so they would lessen their troubles getting up there. You, you certainly lessen your troubles if you lost your foothold oh, yeah. climbing up there, my gosh. The monastery is the centre of the archaeological element of Skellig. That concept of the monastic settlement, the religious community here so many hundreds of years ago, in such a rugged and, and wild place, it really stands as a, as a monument to man's endurance. That's the colour cell A, that's the biggest, the biggest beehive this year. Right. A, B, C, D, E, F, F. These structures don't look after themselves. They are battered by the elements here in the Atlantic um, and increasingly battered by, by extreme weather. In terms of the solidity of the structures now and how structurally sound they are, do we have any thoughts on how we continue to ensure that these structures stay up? Well, we must remember that there's always been a history of collapse here back in monastic times and the walls would have collapsed, they'd have rebuilt them. So what we have to do is we have to analyse the movement in this wall and if we're going to take it down, come up with a very good solution future-proofing solution so that it stays there. We also have to address the water issues because there's an awful lot of water coming through the structure. That's part of the grand plan. It has to be both in terms of the sustainability of this, also the accessibility. A lot of people do find those steps daunting and, yeah. and fitness levels mean people can't. If we can get the mainland centre up, we get some live cameras here, and couple that with Fergus's plans here now for the lighthouse and yeah, that. And, and both and, lighthouses. And that helps ease the pressure off the island itself. We're very proud of our partnership with the Office of Public Works here. It is a unique environment in which to work. Challenging in terms of the logistics. The OPW colleagues we've met today and you see in them a, a love of the place, a love for the place. You must take great pride, Pat. I mean, so you could say that this wall all the way up is uh, your work over the last number of years. This wall was moved in. Uh, from the base upwards. The work that the OPW do that we've seen here even today in, in, in terms of upkeep and maintenance is immense. As we move towards plans to perhaps refurbish the lighthouses, we look forward to providing the visitors here with an authentic experience to get the story of Skellig out there to as wide an audience as we possibly can. Skellig. It's one of just two World Heritage Sites that we have and we hold them dear. And we're proud as a department to be able to work with the Office of Public Works so well over so many years to ensure that this place survives for, for many, many more generations to come. <laughs>